Should be uh, an interesting round, but that, that was a long round, I believe. You think so? The last one felt long, but uh -huh. maybe not. Maybe it's just our perception. You know, it depends on the number of moves. Normally it will take around two hours, but we have 170 moves game. Then it can go a little longer. That's a start real late. And, but no, no rest for Richie. Black against Magnus. Messed up your black game against MVL. Now you're black against Magnus. Indeed. And Magnus goes for knight f3. He's, he's playing it all classical. Richie is not a blocker. And c5. You're also feeling aggressive. Maybe it's going to be Benoni day. Another Benoni. Not very often that you play the Benoni with black. Then you come back for your white game. You get the Benoni too. It's making a comeback. Magnus will choose, I would guess, a different line. Although maybe he feels inspired by Vincent. And revisit this setup. But now he plays h3. Well, after bishop g7. e4. We have a well-known theoretical line. And he's probably relying on Bradford not being super booked up there in the critical lines after e4 castles. Bishop to d3. Then black can try to force the issue with pawn to b5, but it requires a lot of knowledge. Oh no, and he goes bishop e3, not bishop d3. This is a position you more regularly get via a king's Indian move order. Mm. So it could be that Magnus knows it from there. In general, he knows, he knows his stuff. Mouse is very slow, so I always need like 10 minutes to show any line. This is how you typically get this. Anyway, no one cares. There should be three <laughs> pointers after rook e8, you go knight d2, and you already have your bishop out, which is what happened. Yeah. And a6 played by Rapport, I guess you go a4. Yeah, but now, um, according to my notes, you can take on e4 here. But uh -huh. Engine also says so. Well, I use the engine for my notes. And uh, it's an interesting line to take on e4. Uh -huh. But it's nothing special because you take with the c knight, and then the idea is f5. Uh -huh. And if you move the knight, then f4 comes. And that is good for black. Uh -huh. So you don't do that, but you just ignore it. Uh -huh. You play bishop e2. And he does take on e4. Take. Wow, he knows this stuff. Yeah, but so does Magnus. f5, and he's just gonna... He's just gonna ignore it with bishop e2. He's not gonna take on d6 here. Um, he's gonna close the e-file with bishop e2, f4. Then he's gonna plant the knight on c4 at some point. Uh, and he's going to just claim that he's much better. And I think this is honestly really poor decision by Richie, strategically. Just look, feels like this is about as good a uh, Benoni you can get from the white side. He's Unless down. Who, white? Yeah. Yeah, but you've got squares. Yeah, and squares. Mm -hmm. squares. I, we spoke about this yesterday. Yes. Chess is not about pieces, it's about squares. Oh, so what squares is it? B6, uh -huh. C4, A5? Well, Goodness. for the B6 square. Yeah, it does make sense. It's not his first rodeo. But yeah, it's a very risky choice against... Magnus could be that it wasn't so much to mix it up, but that Richard didn't like his chances if he played something quote unquote normal in the Catalan or whatever. Maybe just likes Benoni's. He did it against Ding as well. Maybe it's his thing. Well, why is every game a Benoni now? It's good for white. <laughs> why does everybody do this? <laughs> okay, this is a better version, I will admit. But still. Ah, this is. Uh an anti Grunfeld Benoni. Wow. You 
know your opening names. Do I? No. Nah. A5. Well, Richard must have, of course, prepared this. Yeah, he had a long break. But this is um, about as ugly as it gets strategically for black. Because of the squares? The squares. B5, B6, D6. A pawn up. Go here. Yeah, but I'm going to put the bishop on F4. You're going to have to go passive. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. You can, you can get away with it. White well, has to be very fast. You mm -hmm. can't just mince around here. You, you, you do have to be fast here. Mm -hmm. To use the squares. Yeah, because... <coughs> Of course. So let's see what could happen. Like bishop f4 is logical, bishop f8 logical. This is classy. Rook a3. Rook swing. Yeah. It's a total mess. I'm not, I'm not sure who's better or why. Queen f6. Could easily win. Rapport doing his Benoni homework. And Magnus seems a rattle this strong, but he has to take a moment. A5 caught him by surprise. Freitman Keimer. All these Germans, they play knight f3, g3. <laughs> yeah, this line B5. Yeah. C5. Hmm. I looked at this once. It was a bit unpleasant for black. And should D2 threatening to come here. Let's see, 6, knight E5. Daniel knows his stuff. Yeah. Ah, but queen just B3. as I said, he goes queen b3 also. Also interesting. Text the bishop. Rook a7. He could take and then go d5, but it's not it's not Vinny style. I think he's gonna play rook a7. Yep. And now uh... at what point will his haircut start messing with his ability to see the chessboard. We're not that far away, right? It's <laughs> curtains. <laughs> yeah. But he's... Okay, he's not totally unhappy here, I guess, but ever so slightly better for white. So like 0, 26, the neighborhood? Somewhere between 0, 0,21 and 0, 0,13. Oh. Just a wild guess. MVL has put his pawn on C4, which is always an interesting thing to do in a Benoni. And he's going for a walk, saying, I studied this in great detail in my laboratory. Rook FC8? Yeah, I don't know. I always like white, but then they activate their pieces and they checkmate me. No. Not in this, not in this position, there's no checkmate in sight. I really yeah, like white. Well I really like white here. Feels like one of those Benonis which if white gets in a5 and you can surround this pawn on c4, it just looks gross. Yeah, this guy's a little yeah. Yeah. weakish. Yeah, but this... Yeah. Rook a5? Wow. <laughs> I mean, I just played rook a5 here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you do choose very good moves. Thank you. Okay, let's go back yeah. to the clash of our leaders. Magnus Carlsen against Richard Rapport. Richard Rapport from Hungary representing Romania. A lot of strong players. Switch to the Romanian Federation with the support of Superbet there. A lot of money coming into Romanian chess. Kirill Shevchenko also joined the team. Livio Dieter Nesipiano, who used to play for Germany, is back to Romania. Oh, I didn't know that actually. Okay. And Richard Rapport. The Hungarian also playing for Romania. But he's very well known around these parts because he also plays for the Baden Baden team and has for quite a while. So Richard is no stranger to Southwest Germany. Daniel play Queen B6. Whoa, so clinical. No queens for you, Mr. Keimer. Anyway. Castles upon down. He has squares, but it's a weird position. I'm not sure how happy he is. Because white has to play dynamically. If he just chills, then the knight shows up on b4. Bishop comes out. Bishop f4 on the board. Bishop f8 has to be played. Ah, we see. is there any merit here in not castling? But you can't go crazy here, I don't think. Of course, I wanted to play h4, but how, how ridiculous, I guess it's just insanely ridiculous to go h4 here. Not probably a bit much. It just goes 96. Yeah, then bishop g5. Bishop g5. Yeah. Bishop e7. Queen d2. Yeah. Rook a4. Yeah. Rook a3. Yep. And just. If you want to, you can do it. Should we put it on the board so that people can. Mm, not sure it's worth putting. Okay. Oops, uh, let's take the bishop. This is what we were talking about. Just loses. Because there's some 93. Yeah. Very unfortunate that there's some random 93 that wins. Such it's luck. <laughs> After you claimed all these squares. <laughs> I wanted to try and make something. He goes rook a3 first, knight a6. Yeah. On the board. <coughs> Getting some info that a5 was a novelty by Injic in the Chennai Olympiad. Wow. And that the computer depth likes this and says it's equal. Marine wrote a big article about this. About this exact yeah, position? It's apparently big, big debate in the Benoni fan club about this stuff. Rapport. Well, Rapport, Rapport should know a lot from, from Marine, right? Why? Aren't, aren't they both from Romania, or am I going insane? Yeah, but I well, don't know a lot from Friedman, and we're both German. Well, yeah, but Romania is a lot smaller in the chess, what, the, the Romanian chess I world. I don't think Keimer played Queen C7. Um, I think he did. Took on b6, my takes. Okay, it's a bit dry. We can stay here. Yeah, staying here looks good. <coughs> um, so, not a success. Critical moment now for Magnus. Is he going to castle? 
Or is he going to play rook g3? What about rook g3 and h4, just caveman style? That's possible. Once again, you will have your knight d3 issues. Yeah. Yeah, but this, yeah. King f1, bishop f5, yeah. Yeah, or knight takes f4. No, I was thinking about taking on d3 first and then, uh, you know, something like rook g3, yeah, rook g3, knight b4, but eight. Really, I can't allow this knight d3. No, you really yeah. should not. No, this is too much. No. I mean, I would play king f1 because I'm just such a caveman, but... Yeah, but can we stop lo looking at losing positions after pawn to h4? Magnus does castle. Castle is much better. You know, the king, it gets the safety and you also activate the rook. It's mm -hmm. like feeding two birds with one scone, as right. we say, in right. 2024. <laughs> with one scone. Knight b4, and if rook e3? That's, that's a question. So the threat here is, there isn't a direct threat. No, Just something like... f3 is looming. Like it's a little short on development on this side of the board. Mm. But apparently there's b5. Ale. Yeah, this is extremely sharp. And Magnus goes for the more... Classical queen, queen d2. two. Just get the pieces out. Probably too early for b5 now, although it's still interesting. But no, no, it does not work. Why exactly? Oh, now bishop g5 is strong. Yeah. Just takes. And the computer is very happy for white. Okay. So. What should Rapport do? Bishop f5 looks logical, b6 looks logical to maybe swing this rook over. b5 also looks logical to me, but it doesn't seem to work. Richie thinking. Tricky for both sides, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Let's briefly check in with the world champion Ding Liren facing Mon Ami Francais Maxime Vachy Lagrave Maxime gave the bishop typical thing in these structures if you get the chance because this light square bishop doesn't contribute to the fight for the e5 square that's what they told me in chess school so it's often a good idea to get rid of it because it's all about the e5 square Took the A rook, put the other one here. Now he gives the pawn. Going for jumps. But he's a pawn down. Yeah, I think his idea is that he wants to. Uh, ah, he can actually take on c3 here. And if yeah. bishop takes c3, knight e4. And I think you're fine. And if b takes c3, you can take on d5. So I think this looks worse. C4, Queen B3, Rook B1. Yeah. Maybe bishops. This guy can always go here. Well, this I like for white. Yeah, I can get behind that. So would Ding. Yeah. Maybe has to take here and back, but uh, it's not terrible. But also not fully equal. Yeah, it's not the end of the world with the opposite colored bishops and the active guy on g7. But he's a pawn down. Maxime must be feeling good after he won that last game against Rapport, putting him right back in the tournament. If he makes a solid draw now against the so far somewhat lackluster thing. Then, still all to play for. Agreed. B6 played by Rapport. Yeah, both guys playing well here. Also preparing Bishop A6. Did you watch the movie Doom Part 2? Um... <laughs> No. 
Doom I, Part One. I haven't seen Doom. No, neither. Oh, okay. Neither film. I, I played Doom years ago. Doom, D-U-N-E. Oh, Dune. Mm -hmm. No, I've not seen it either. Okay. Good. It's quite good. Yeah. Uh, I recommend it. Who's in it? Everybody's in it. Every Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Austin Butler, all the cool kids. They're too cool and new for me to... Stellan Skarsgård. Stellan Skarsgård? Stellan Skarsgård. You don't know Stellan Skarsgård? I really do don't. Should I? Yeah, he's, he's quite well known. Okay. But I'm asking, because there's this... There's this noble house, sort of the heroes of the movie. The, the Harkonnens, they're called. Mm -hmm. And optically, they resemble your current style strongly. Especially there's this one character, Fight Rather Harkonnen. Mm -hmm. He looks like a young Lawrence Trent, played by big new star Austin Butler, who recently played Elvis. Okay. So yeah, he looks, he looks just like you. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, yeah, please do. B6 on the board. Uh huh. Still. Magnus taking the, the, the jacket off. It's go time. <laughs> yeah, difficult, difficult one to, to know exactly what to do here. Rook G3. Rook G3 is kind of just the, the move that uh, the hand brings the rook across quite naturally. Uh -huh. But the problem is it's an unrefined move. It doesn't actually do anything. Mm. So what's a refined move? I don't know. This position tough to play for white. Yeah. Actually. Well, black's moves are a bit easier. Should I six, rook a seven? Black still yeah. pawn up. Black has all these squares. Yes. Benoni seems like a great opening. It's a good opening. I don't know why it's got such a bad reputation. Mm, it's pretty terrible, especially <laughs> after knight c3 with knight f3 less terrible. No. So you yeah. think the lines with f4 are just very strong? Not just the lines with f4, but like as many, many great lines here. Oh yeah, the ones with f4 are the most challenging. I usually play knight e2, which I also like. F4 is very strong here. And this is why. After that F3, it's played more often and less brazen. But after knight C3, what Magnus did, he must have had a pretty strong read that Nelson wouldn't do anything too funky. And yeah, rook G3 played. Great minds think alike. Actually, A6 looks very logical. No, he goes rook a7 first. And now, now finally. it's time for your, for your h4 move. Yeah, kind of Setting logical. a devious trap. Kind of logical. Boom. But e3 here, it's not over, <laughs> ironically. Oh, it continues. Yeah, e3 and it really continues. Because uh, how do you take? Takes sort of wins, no? Uh, um, ah, this wins? Hanging. Oh, right, OK. Uh, yes, okay. Yeah, that sort of wins. Okay, so I expect h4 by Magnus here, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, because... Also, what else here? You got yeah. to make something happen. Now there's no longer 93 check. <coughs> f3, maybe you think about it. Not sure how well that mixes with rook to g3. Yeah, H4 plate. Oh, yeah. This is, Here this he is goes. This is Magnus style. H4? Yeah. Don't see him playing lots of H4s, no? That's the best move, so that is his style. Hmm. <coughs> 
report. Digging in. Do you see the rapport Kurt Cobain comparisons? Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen them in meme form, but... Like? I can... I, we were speaking about them years ago. Oh. He has got a unique style for chess, that's, that's for sure, as Richie. Okay, H4, I like it. I think uh, now, not easy for black at all. I guess you go rook f7, that's the most... No, I don't think, rook I don't think you put the bishop... Yeah, rook f7, h5, bishop f5. Mm. I'm sure I love the bishop here. I, d I don't like it on a6, though, because when I go b3, you're just kind of... Yeah, well, I can at least get rid of it. Mm. We, will, we will see Okay. which way. Rapper way of the bishop. Yeah. Meanwhile, in uh, Friedman against Kaima... Uh, Daniel is, is enjoying himself, putting some mild pressure, got rid of the queens early, chill. You think this is fun for Daniel? Yeah. You think he's enjoying Daniel. himself? I think he's enjoying himself. It's two out of five, which I'm sure he's not thrilled about, but it's, it's not a disaster. He's shown he can play with these guys. He's going to rep it. He doesn't have a lot of pressure. I think he's having a great time. I guess making some money, what's not to like? Yeah, I mean, winning the Open here is actually massive, isn't it? Because you win the prize from the Open, which is not small. And then you get an entry to this where you get a minimum takeaway, so. That's takeaway. A minimum prize guarantee. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they are, do you? I have no idea, but it'll be decent. So, fair play to him. Fair play to him. No, he's a good guy. And yeah. As you know, chess is a grind with all these rep tournaments, open tournament leagues and so on. It's always good to get in. Even payday. Happy to see Diane do well. But of course, not at Vinnie K's expense. Look how sad Vinny looks. Yeah, he's he had a long, tough game against Magnus. A long day. He's had a long day. He's now slightly worse against a grinder. Um, you know, I I think Vinny K's chances of he looks tired. That's what tired. I was worried about with the starting time. Yeah, Vinny needs his, uh, his he needs steady. He needs his 3 p.m. start, be done at 7, have a little dinner, go for a walk, back to the hotel. What's, what's your uh, routine going to be at, as captain of the German team with Vinny K on board one? Can you, can you give us a little insight into... Sure. We'll have a negotiation. <coughs> he will say, I can rest the first three games and then play the rest. Um, two games max and then you play the rest. And then, other than that... Not much. You wait till the round is over. And then, normally, you have a little team dinner. Normally, at some buffet and whatever random hotel you stay in. Then, you wait for the pairings to come out. Then, we discuss the lineup. Although, I don't like discussing. Cause it's always a bunch of whining. So, normally, my own demand is I decide the lineup and let's be done with it quickly. Then, if we want to hang out or de debate opponents, we can do it after. So I tell them, okay, Rasmus, you get black as usual. <laughs> um, Vincent, you play. Um, and then people start preparing. Sometimes I'll help a little bit, sometimes I won't, depending on circumstances, what's needed. Then you reconvene in the morning. Some guys show up at breakfast, like Vincent, which is why it's very hard for him to play so late. He's an early bird. Mm. 
then you check how prep is going. As a captain, you have to remember to hand in your lineup till 10 a.m. <laughs> a lot of responsibilities. Then you have like lunch together at 1.30 or 1, depending on how far you have to go. And the game starts at 3. You sit there for five hours, read your book, rinse and repeat. That's right. You like to stay in the hall and read, don't you? You gotta. You have to stay there, right? Well, you don't have to read. Sounds like a dream job. It is a dream job. Well, you, the Germans have got... Uh, what, are your, what are your hopes for the Olympia? Let's talk about that. Do you have any specific goals or expectations? Hmm. I just want um, everybody to get along with each other. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Results, of course, matter, but mainly, I feel these young adults, I want them to develop a sense of community, enjoy each other's company, wow. don't take it for granted, embrace the culture. It's not just all about medals, ratings. I have a more holistic approach to my company. Fantastic. Nah, I'm kidding. I should win a medal so I can brag about my, my great coaching skills. Mm. Is winning a medal a realistic? It's tough, but <coughs> what goals can you set? <coughs> I don't know, that'd probably be the number, like let's say 10 seat. As high as 10? I don't know. Maybe. A lot of strong countries out there. Yeah. China, India, the US and A, right. India. Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. Also very strong, but they didn't impress in the European team championship. France, they play with Ariza and Maxim, fantastic team. Uzbekistan, I think, won last time. England? Yeah. <laughs> okay, fantastic team. Now reinforced <laughs> with Nikita Vitugov. Yeah, born and bred. Um, Essex own. <laughs> H1 Rook F7 played. Rook F7, you were right again. Well, I kind of have a good feel for where the pieces can go in these structures. I played a lot of Benoni's. That was a bad move. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. I never said I played the positions well. I just have a feel for where people might play. Uh -huh. Okay, Rook F7, so Bishop G5. So what's the benefit of going bishop g5 here? Text queen? Yes. And bishop e7 is no good because yeah, now h5 and bishop f5. But you've got this knight e3 move always. Okay, but something like this looks logical enough. It's anybody's game. Yeah. Really is. So are you coming to the Olympiad? Will you will you be coaching some team maybe? Yes. Uh -huh. Which team? Top secret. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not coaching a team at all. Mm. I have been asked to come. I have to iron out some details next week. I don't think I can though. Busy guy. Just because theoretically I'm employed, so it's a bit mm -hmm. more tricky. Hans is back again. Yeah, Hans is just floating around the <laughs> top tables. Is he playing just, or is it just hanging he just, out he, there? He wants to give the impression that he you know he belongs there he is. with the crowd. Yeah, so, uh, but the Olympiad, we went Tromso 2014. Oh. You remember? I do remember. Ten years ago. Time goes by. We had a great show. <laughs> it was good. Was it? I yeah. don't remember that. Kasparov came on. Yeah, yeah, I do. I 
to record. We had a lot of fun. I think that was the year, did China win it that year? Yes. Yeah. So, in this game here, Friedman against Keimer, mm -hmm. uh, not much going on. No, it's peaceful. I guess you go for some B4. E4, E4 is a very... Break. Before, it's too late. Oh yeah, this makes some sense. E4 is committal, of course, so you mm. better be sure. But it looks logical. If it takes, takes, then we have D4. Mm -hmm. A6, we can also take. But E4, Daniel, I don't know, he likes his bishops to have a clear view. So maybe, it's not his style, maybe he'll, you know, shuffle his horsey, put some rook here, go B4. Something along these lines. <clears throat> so for the many chess fans that came to Karlsruhe, you're basically a local at this point. You've been here many times. Do you have any any recommendations, like favorite spots to in Karlsruhe? Yeah. Spots no. to go, restaurants, bars, sightseeing. I like the uh, bar, the hotel bar of Novotel. It's pretty good mm -hmm. across the street. Mm -hmm. That's all right. But I don't know Karlsruhe that much at all because when you're in this chess world, you're just kind of. When I used to, at least when I played here, you play two games a day: one in the morning, one in the afternoon slash evening, and that's the whole day gone. And by the end of the day, you're pretty tired. That's true. You eat and then you go to bed and it's rinse and repeat. This is not the island of Ibiza. Huh? Not quite. No, it's a great tournament. Uh, you can see there a, a, a live footage of just how big it is. That's just one hall. There's another hall. There is another big. huge hall. Uh, so. But big fan of, of obviously this tournament. Uh, don't know much about the city. Oh, okay. I've been around Baden Baden a bit more, but that's not really here. It's not, it's even not that far. How far are we? Would you say? No, Thirty-five minutes by car. So okay. Yeah. Baden Baden is very cute. <coughs> I've definitely been around Baden Baden a bit more. Uh, and Wiesbaden, I've been around, but I don't know how far that is. That's probably a bit further out as well. Mm -hmm. More towards Mannheim, is it, I think? What about Baden in Austria? Baden in Austria? Yeah. No. no oh, yeah, you have you? I've been there, no, It sounded like you had a preference for Baden, Baden, Wiesbaden, so I thought. Baden Just anything with the Baden? Baden? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Baden is also the German word for taking a bath. Right, exactly. And Wies is the word for... Grass? Yeah. Grass bath. True. <laughs> Salt bath. Are you a fan of baths in general? I like the idea, and sometimes I do it, but normally I get bored sort of quickly. Mm. What are we talking about? Taking a bath or yeah. bath? Taking a bath. You know, laying yeah, there in the no, hot sometimes water. Sometimes I do it, but normally, you know, life's very stressful. Right. Sometimes when I have stuff to do later, I feel I'm sleepy. I should take a bath, and it's going to re rejuvenate me. Yeah, it just makes me more sleepy. Mm. Banjam, I think, is a good thing. I never understood this. Bill Burr bit about one shouldn't bath. He's wrong. But I like the I like the inner peace. Bishop G5 played. Well, the good news is we're getting all the moves right. Yeah. Which is amazing. But Richard's still a pawn up. Got a lot of pieces over the king's side, so... That's a decision. 
to go here uh, or here. I, I three seven a little risky, of course. I'm not sure how risky it is. Like bishop e seven, what's the big deal? Nothing. I guess we take and go h five. Okay, takes. Ah, I can't take with the queen because b six is hanging. If I take with the eight rook, it's possible. It's possible. And if bishop f five. Which is the logical way to develop for? Yeah, I guess. Ah, so this runs into too. bishop g4. And if bishop takes g4, you take on g6. Oh, solution took. Yeah. And then you take back. And even this it didn't feel clear cut at all. Nope. So I don't think Richard has, has got any reason to be overly concerned right now. No. Still mildly scary. Long term king safety. Report. He looks stressed. Which one is it? <laughs> yeah. Um. Not straightforward at all. Not straightforward at all. Should briefly check in with the ding. Of course. And VL game. Of ding course. Still a pawn up. Yeah. Still chipping away. And VL has nice active pieces, but it's never fully equal the things with healthy extra pawn for white. So MVL, French school of suffering, full effect. Yeah, it's a quiet around so far. Yeah, could, could heat up, but yeah, and Friedman Keimer, we have a quietish. Even that could gain. That could even heat up at the right moment. Yeah, 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 sure. Rook comes to c1. Rook. I mean, I love White's position, by the way. Mm -hmm. Of course, it could be completely wrong that I love it, but you can't control what you love. Can you not? No. What do you love? It's mm. a tough question. Mm. I'm more of a hater. <laughs> it's a problem. Anyway. I love Ding's position. Yeah, I knew I know. Extra pawn. Yeah. A thousand years ago, G4, G5. Yes. And Rapper yeah. has played Bishop to E7. Yeah. Now the question is, which rook is he going to take with? I probably will go with the F rook. But I think going with the E rook is not, not insane. Um, Knight c7 by Vincent Kamer. We'll see what Richard does here. I think he's going to take with the... Out of the rooks? Hmm. I guess. I guess the e rook. The e rook? Mm hmm Yeah. Makes more sense, I think. Use both of them. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, we'll keep it on that. Let's go to Friedman again. These games in the open tournament, by the way, they're on stage. Is that already the second round? Is the open tournament rapid, or is that still the first? No, that's round? that's that's classical. For sure. So they only play one round today, then. I would guess so. Yes. So they play one round today. Then tomorrow is a day off, and then they start playing two games. They might even have. Three games or something. Or do they play tomorrow? It's just a ah, broadcast they might, and there's. They might play tomorrow. Probably play tomorrow, if not. Would yeah, be they, yeah. I think yeah. it's just you can't broadcast anything, which is why the, the classic has its rest. Yeah. But I could be wrong about this. No. 
Yes. Um, Yeah, it's uh, it's a tricky one. This uh, this whole round is a bit tricky. I've got no clear feeling. The only clear feeling I've got is I don't think Daniel or Ding. Well, well I, Ding is just not going to lose. Wow, he took with the queen. Oh. Why? That's uh, leaving this guy on prise. Magnus starts with h5, saving the pawn and attacking here. Why would you take with the queen? He doesn't respect the pawns. So what's the idea? So there has to be some big idea. No, just against this pawn. Harmonious, I guess, but this is a serious pawn to develop. Cause yeah, because a5 is weak. And very bizarre decision here by Richard, in my opinion. He's also tired. Had a long, tough game last round, which didn't end the way he would have liked to mm. the way he thought, probably, because it was better for most of it. Mm -hmm. Now he's black against Magnus. Magnus looking fresh, rested, putting pressure. But let's see. Yeah, I agree. Um, <coughs> What's going on there? Who's standing behind him? That's it's probably Hans. That's Dean. Yeah. We're just feeling a bit of pressure here, you can tell. He's, he's not in the heat. He's not overly happy. No. He looks tired. Meanwhile, just yes, yeah. Well, I've said it many times, it messes with players if Fire. you change the starting time of the games by four hours later. So everybody's a bit off their internal clock now. Mm -hmm. It's not like chess players go to sleep at 10 p.m., but once your body gets used to get up in the morning, get have breakfast, prepare, play at 3, then it's very, very hard to switch around to 7 p.m. What's your favorite time to play chess? Never. <laughs> Will you be doing the Thailand Open again? I don't know. Okay. It's now in April. Check it out. Hua Hin, Sheraton Hotel. Looks absolutely beautiful. Mm. So go to bangkokchess.com and check out the, I think technically it's called Bangkok Chess Club Open. Should be mid-April. I hope it's going to be bigger than this tournament. Absolutely fantastic location. Bigger? Yeah, normally it's around 200, 300 people. But might as well go bigger. Make it 3,000. <laughs> no, so I'm not sure I'll make it there, but it, the hotel looks amazing. Hua Hin is an amazing city. I very much recommend it, of course. Mm. Well, now I guess, yeah, 3 p.m. makes sense as a start time. I'm also fine with 2 p.m. because normally I don't have lunch, so you go get What about first. 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning? Yeah, it's not my favorite. <clears throat> Dreadful. Okay, Magnus back at the board. There he is. Mission zero. Richard seems to have doubts if he should go rook g7 or bishop f5, which I guess is what he's thinking about, because he has to cover that pawn. Rook g7 is a bit bishop unnatural, but it's the computer's favorite player. Yeah, bishop f5 is what humans do. Magnus 
we'll probably snack that pawn. That's still a mess. Queen h4. I don't even hate this decision to give that pawn. Doesn't want to defend. So, if he doesn't take that pawn, does he want to go bishop g4? But it's possible. Yeah, it's because a pawn. it is a pawn, yeah, but it's not. Well. It's not going anywhere, and this actually re generates the threat mm -hmm. of the pawn on g6. That is true. I like bishop g4. Um, yeah, I like bishop g4. The, uh -huh. only, the only thing is, well, does the knight ever land on d3? This is the question. And that is a question. Should we be concerned? It's two questions. That, <laughs> Two questions. Um, How's Vincent doing? Is he hanging in there? Yeah, he's hanging in there. Hanging around. You can also give a check first and then take on G2 with check, but I'm not sure the extra tempo does anything. I mean, well, yeah, it looks equal. Meanwhile, Magnus plays bishop g4. Oh. Putting pressure. Mm. Take. Take. Now, if might be 6 I have e3 at least. Yeah. It should solve the problems. Assuming there are any problems. But probably he's not going to go knight b6. He's going to do some Magnus y thing. Yeah, rook e1. Because rook takes e4 is definitely not completely ridiculous in some positions. No, I don't know. It's still sharp. This pawn is also here. Yeah. yeah it's a tough fight. Tough one. Very tough. It's toughy. Well, toughy. MBL is just trying to hang on here. Yeah. But him, since Ding offered him a draw a while ago, it, it went. Oh no, out. wait, they drew. Yes. Excuse me. draw for it by Ding. Wow. It doesn't, okay. doesn't seem to be putting max pressure, no? Like, <laughs> yeah, the draw offer is definitely not putting max pressure. I mean, I guess they found a way to repeat moves, but he already did a quick white draw against Rapport. I guess his confidence. Mm. is not where it used to be, mm. where it should be, because he was always a big fighter in here. He's a pawn up, it's more or less a free roll. So what do you think has happened to Ding then? What, what, what's your interpretation of why he's playing so s below his level? I don't know, I'm not so comfortable speaking about it, because I don't know very much. You hear rumors that he had uh, some health problems okay. from sleeping that he's talked about. But I honestly don't know. It looked like there were things either outside chess or maybe connected to the pressure or the self imposed pressure of being the world champion that made his life not so easy. But I honestly don't know. And I'm just a fan, so I'm happy to see him back in action. But clearly, he's not at the level he used to be. But also, I'm not sh Once again, I'm not sure, but I would guess. The pandemic hit him very hard, mm -hmm. not just when it comes to not being able to travel, but also I'm assuming he spent a lot of time alone in some flat here, yeah, which could have been all that pleasant. I don't know, I'm speculating here. I don't know. Such a nice guy, such a strong player. So let's give him some time. Who have you got winning for the candidates, by the way? I don't know. Very hard to read. I think your boy Fabi had a pretty good 2023. 20, yeah, very been good there, 20, done that as well. Yeah. So I guess it's a name that comes to mind. Nepomnishi won the last two candidates. 
So he's certainly been there, done that. Mm. I can't really judge these kids. It feels early for like the Gukesh Pragnananda. Well, obviously, they are tremendous players. Hikaru, I'm pretty sure, is very motivated. Think of all the clicks if he gets the World Championship. Wow. I mean, he would have a confession booth, like, <coughs> it would be amazing. So I'm pretty sure he's taking it quite seriously. Very, very hard to predict, but I guess you got to start with Fabi and the Pomnashi, because they're the guys who've, who've done it. Fair enough. Do I play? And so Abasov, you're... I don't think he's going to do terribly, but yeah, he's, he hasn't done spectacularly ever since that right, okay. World Cup. And yeah, of course, a bit of an outsider in that field. Alireza, maybe. It's Alireza time. He <coughs> learned his lesson last time around. Could be. So many, so impossible to call it, actually. It seems impossible. Okay, takes takes on the board. Takes takes. And Six. it looks a bit passive. Looks like Richie is not in the mood for passivity. Maybe this is more, more up his alley. Wow, I actually love that. What is this suggestion here of rook takes e four? Oh, that's movable. Ooh. Yeah, but Queen, e, Queen e5. Comfy doesn't care. Okay, but such a sicko. <laughs> it's just can't argue with the computer. Just says it's winning. Rook d5, Queen h6 in that line is just over. Yeah, that's unlikely. But let's see. Rook f5 looks funky. Yeah, could do. Uh, Friedman against Kaima is just very, very quiet. Not much going on here, guys. Equal material. Anybody said a word. There we see Vincent. Also looks tired. Poor boys. Oh, wow, so look tired. at that. That's a signed. Has Hans. That's a, what's that? It's not a sign. Well, it is signed, actually, sorry. Uh -huh, it is signed. It is signed, yeah. What's the word you're looking for? Chessboard? Chessboard. Oh. I don't know where that is. Oh, that's somebody's purchased that, have they? Oh, I wonder what the MVL stands for. Does Rapport, does he have like a Z, like Zorro there? What's going on there? Yeah, what is that? Um, Keimer? Does, does he sign Keimer, Keimer? Yes. Or uh, those are the signatures, and then someone wrote who it actually belongs to, I guess. But look, right? Neiman's on there. Most people don't sign their name in like these printed letters. <laughs> so those are the signatures, and then someone wrote who it is. Ah, now it all adds up. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Can we buy it? Well, it looks like somebody already bought it. How? Why do you know? How? Because it's sitting by the bo uh, the chairs, the spectator chairs. Uh -huh. Maybe it's just someone brought a board and asked people to sign it. Also, awesome. need to buy it. Maybe it's a new business for you. I know you're very business savvy. Bring boards, have guys sign them, sell them. It's exactly the sort of idea I'm looking for. You're welcome. <laughs> Whoa! Rook G7 Mistake. seems wrong, according to Monsieur Computer. Rookie That's one so is bad. just winning. Why? One just threatening to take you. Yeah, and Rookie one's the most natural move in the world here. Yeah, that is very findable. Wow. Yeah, Rook G7 also. Rook G7 looks wrong, feels right? wrong. Yeah. yeah. It's so much easier to just commentate on games. Yeah, it's so much easier to just <laughs> read out the computer moves and then criticize guys when they don't make one. <laughs> mm. 
We're not just reading out the computer lines. We've yes, got, sir. we've got assistants. Mm -hmm. But we're not. There's a, a view of the crowd. Look at that. Ten thirty on a Thursday night. It full house. Be bad. Look, we've got some real. Where fans. Are the parents? Ah no, this is. I think. Is this the German commentary? I think because you can wear headphones, and Klaus Bischoff is giving the German commentary. I saw him in the uh, in the elevator earlier. Oh. There's a guy who's just not changed. He's so chilled out. Is Klaus Bischoff? Yeah. Nice guy. Very nice guy. You know him well? Of course. Been around for a long time. He's been around for a long time. And he's got a very nice voice to listen to. Yeah. And these youngsters... Who are these people? I don't know, but it's 10.30 at night. I'm always shocked that there are actually people that enjoy chess and watching chess. Because you know I'm very negative, I hate everything in myself. <laughs> so whenever I see like this passion in people, like yeah. going somewhere to watch a thing, it confuses me. Shocks you, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Um, it's called being passionate. It's, uh -huh. Yeah. They didn't look that passionate. What can make you refine your true love for this game? I don't know, it's tough. Tough now, huh? Mm. It's difficult because. Frankly, I think some people just have it for a long, long time and the beauty of the game and so on. I've never had that. I've had this rush of learning new things when I was younger, but now it's not that easy anymore and it's difficult. It's difficult. And you're a dad, you have a family and... Okay, that, uh, <laughs> that can happen. But I still have it when I, I find like a new topic where I can absorb a lot of information quickly. Then I'm into it. But chess is getting tougher. Like just from a passion standpoint, also from a playing strength standpoint, but mainly yeah. GH. R Ricky love. is just uh, self-destructing uh, here. Yeah, he wants to give the queen. Yeah. But it's not gonna work. Because takes. Yeah, he wants rook takes e4. Ninety six rook d four, but the white queen is just it's just coming in, right? Queen anywhere. It's just queen e two. Queen e2 is just really over, right? That's immediate resigns. C'est fini. Okay, maybe rook d4 isn't the most resilient, but the position is just collapse. Even here, look at this. Ooh. No, 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 no. This is this is brilliant. Rook d5, queen e2, that's queen e8 nice. is mate. Threatening checkmate. Wow, that's... Once again. F4 is not an obvious move there. No, but that Magnus can fight on a good day. And I think, yeah, we're already here. Take six takes. He's also going to take here for sure. And now, after rookie five, I guess he wants rookie five. Because rook g4, rook g4. just g3, and we have my five. That doesn't work. Rook d4, queen 2 is obvious. So I think rook e5 is going to happen. Can I, after yeah, rook, rook e5, five yeah, so f4 is the move here. f4 is crushing. But yeah, f4 is really crushing. Tricky. Yeah, I think he finds it, actually. Um... Because it does completely unbalance the black position. Because oh. the rook is. Is there any other move here that he could try? Like for me, the move queen h6 is somehow ridiculous because rook g6. Oh, yeah, that makes no sense. But then queen f4. Is it? But what do you want on h6? I just want to go to f6 or, or just enter. Knight takes d5? Yeah, knight takes d5 is the problem. Yeah. yeah, and I've got no tricks there. No knight at f5s, no nothing. 
Yeah, no, Queen H6 is just utterly absurd. Yeah, he just is just too good. He's good. He's just really good. Yeah, I think. <laughs> you could argue. Conclusion one usually comes to. He's the he best. Kind of bad days, like he had yes. a bad day here on day one, and to some extent day two, but he's he's really good. Yeah, and in fact, and this, also rook, this rook just doesn't have a square because rook e7, knight f5, the rook is out of squares. Yeah. Wow, this is just resigns actually. Yeah, this is more or less over. This is just totally over. Knight f5 is just over. Rook d5 played queen e2, and that's just going to be... The trick. That's it. Yeah, look. He played it with a... A panache. Pleased look on yeah. his face. So what do you do? You go at your face. And knight f5, yeah. Yeah, queens are strong. Just incredible. How many points do you think a queen is worth? Is it nine or ten? I often say nine. I used to say nine, but I think it's ten. It might be ten. It's not worth. We've been un two, undervaluing two her. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's going wrong. Okay, h6 played. Yeah. But queen is six, knight f5. You don't need to be Magnus Carlsen to spot those. But he is Magnus Carlsen. makes it look so easy. It's really infuriating. So it just makes fewer mistakes. I mean, it was a complicated position and unclear who was better, but he never did anything drastically bad. And at some point, people tend to collapse. Helps if you don't make mistakes when you play chess. It really does. Vinny? 95, king e8. Queen e6 on the board. Yeah. This is happening. Wow. Queen and knight, good to attack in tandem, I've, I've heard. Yeah, they... They do different things. They complete each other. Yeah. Is there a variant of chess where the queen also moves like a knight? And Rapper resigns, he's yeah. seen enough. Yeah, Janus chess. Oh, really? Yeah, that's uh -huh. just, okay. Uh, Rapport has had a bad day at the office. I think it's we can... had a bad day. We can say that. Two losses, yeah. one from a winning position or a very good position. You can lose with black to the world. Number one and number three in Rapid, but especially that game against MVL from a winning position. It was tough. And he loses the lead he had built up. It's now back to 50%. And Mr. Magnus, all of a sudden, on plus two. Just finds a way, doesn't he? Life finds a way. And we're left with this cracker. With the Germans. Vincent with the black pieces. Um... Have you considered calling him just Win or Vin? Vinny? No, just Vin. Just Vin? Yeah. No, I've not considered him just calling him Vin. But if you call him just Vin, you could save a cent. Yes. So that is true. Vin Vin situation. <laughs> Very good. Um, Rook F2 played. Good move. Excellent move. Covers the, the C2 square. I guess white is slightly, slightly better, but it's also kind of drawish. I would lose this to Vincent with white. He would do stuff. Yeah. And I uh, don't know, something would happen with the pawns and then other stuff, and then I'd panic and then I'd hang some material. Yeah. That's what would happen. Yeah, you would. Um, if you go below 2600, mm -hmm. is it you just 
calling it a day, retiring? No, I was going to ask you, when you fell below 2400, like, uh, did it uh, did it hurt your uh, self-esteem or you just get did used to it and bit. you keep going? <laughs> yeah, did a little bit, yeah. Um, yeah but we're back. back. We're really back, you know? Not by rating, but in spirit, right? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, no. I mean, we're, spirit's been dead for years, but we're back by rating. Are you above 2400? Yeah, well Whoa, above. I wasn't yeah. aware of that. Congrats. Yeah. I think I'm knocking on 2420-ish. Wow. Yeah. Sky's the limit. Unbelievable. No, I don't know. I'm worried about it because I've been playing so terribly recently. I might have to do some work on chess. No. Yeah, it's Never going to happen. Uh, it might happen, might happen. Really? I don't like it here. Yeah, I don't like it playing so badly. I don't like playing, but when I play playing so badly, I don't like it. Either. I think some work might have to be done. But out of which hours do I take those? Out of my the exactly. office watching hours, out of my streaming hours, out of my gym hours, sleeping hours. Not probably. What am I spending How time much with time the kids do you have? <laughs> it's amazing streaming, awake, watching. Like, like sixteen hours a day. It's pretty sick. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll get to Bishop D six. Uh, is it's a very boring position. Make a draw, guys. Let's all go home. Yeah. Here, this is how you do it. King c six, rook c two, king, king d seven. That's what we want. That's what the handshake, ale. I think that's not completely unreasonable. The nah, problem is, is you go king, king b5, five, yeah. You don't, go, <laughs> you don't go check after king c6. So what do you do, actually? I don't know. There we see the masses. The masses ante Is there a chance to sit somewhere and listen to us via the headphones? I hope I'm not. not sure if they have us. I think they might just have the German commentary. Mm -hmm. And there we have the face of German chess. Mm -hmm. The Wunderkid, the real one. Mm -hmm. the, the Mozart. You think he's going for the Mozart? He's going for the man with the haircut? Yes, he looks like Mozart. He looks like the guy in the Mozart corner. Hold on, king e7. Can we get rookie 2, king d7? That's a, that's a nice repetition. More signed chessboards. You should get a nice chessboard tomorrow and just ask people to sign it. <laughs> as a business idea? No, just you know, for your for private me? collection when you... I don't when you have the chicas come over, you can show them, look, this my chessboard was signed by MVL. Yeah, they're going to be really impressed. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's always a, you know, a winner. It's a door opener. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we just get rookie to king d7? Or is he going to put his king on f7 or, or do something? Nah, nah, there. There's still a lot of chess to be played. Look at Vincent. He's loving every second of it. So tired, poor Vincent. I think Daniel is also going to be tired. Nah, Daniel's feeling good. Wow, look. They beat me to it. Oof. People must have been watching the show and picked up on my genius idea. They're really waiting for Vincent to finish. Vincent, all but your fans are waiting. Is, Don't yeah. keep them waiting. No. Trying to grind out this position. The real question is, do you think they will ask us to sign a chessboard when we no. go? They don't even know. I went to get this little bracelet. He didn't even know who I was. Yeah, okay. But I really meant, will they ask me? Oh, right. Mm. No. Um, I'm also not sure. Like, sometimes you get some, some stuff like, can you sign on the back side? And, like, not here where the good player is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't ruin the board. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> mm. I 
also maybe I'm too aggressive about this thing I always say. All right, uh, I'm here, let's do this. Who wants selfies and then people ask, okay. Who are you? <laughs> Daniel. Wow, they're really waiting. Waiting for Vinny. I mean, they, th they must think that the game is over quick. Have you ever waited anywhere for anybody to, so that they could sign the stuff? Like, <clears throat> No. Not, if you were at an M&M concert, would you? Trivia. the blistering cold for four hours? Trivia. Have I been to an Eminem concert in my life? Probably yes. <clears throat> I'll say yes. No, I didn't, but I, okay. I was supposed to go. I had a chance when I was about 13, 14 years old. Wow. Yeah, he was in the UK. Mm -hmm. and my friends went and they had a wonderful time. Why didn't you go? I can't remember exactly, but I didn't go. I don't know if it... I, I can't remember. I've got some great stories that I'm going to tell you after the show, but... I don't want to talk to you after the show. I know. Jan is not joking, guys. He literally just blanks me. He just completely ghosts me. It's, it's really poor. It's really bad. Night C1. Beautiful. What's going on here? Great move. I'm, I'm not even sure if I can trust my eyes anymore. Does the computer say 94? Yes. We cover that. Rook C4. Very deep. Rook C4. See, I would lose this so effortlessly. <laughs> right. Go H5. <laughs> it's just. Do I go H4? Do I go H3? I don't know. Yeah, I would lose this effortlessly as well to to Vincent. No, oh. B3. Yeah, he's going to go H5 in here. You know it. You just know he's going H5. He's going to just run his hat, his fingers through his. Bishop C7. He wants to relocate the bishop to B6 and cover A5. Yeah, and the white bishop is just not doing very much. Very difficult to find it good work here. Hmm. And H5 is coming at any moment, and yes. I think uh, it's a bit easier to play. But King F3, Knight D4. Makes some sense. Time to bail out. What about just knight d4 immediately? That takes. Bishop takes. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Come on, guys. <coughs> well, let's close the door. I heard you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, king of three. See what Daniel wants to do. Daniel could definitely lose this position. Anybody could lose. Sure. Now Vincent might fall asleep. Ninety four plays indeed. Mm -hmm. I guess you have to take. I think you probably have to take because rookie two just is annoying. Mm -hmm. So I think you do have to take. And then he's going to play king e6 to put his king on a light square. And then we start phase three. Yeah, king f3. It's still very drawish, of course. Just of course. d6. Shuffling his bishop. bishop d6. Back and forth. Okay, now Daniel's going to play king f3. 100%. Yeah, bring the king to d3. Why? Well, it's not really in trouble. No. But he is going to play king f3 here. Mm -hmm. 100%? 95? Mm. It's a high percentage. I'm going to go for 100. King of three played. Easy. And he's going to put the king on d3. And then uh, if the rook ever leaves the c-file, you can even think about bishop c5 at some point. Mm -hmm. 
h5. He's going to leave the c5. Where's it going to go? It can't even leave. Daniel will now play. It's 50 50 between king e4, king e3, or king e2. I don't think he's playing king e3. Just for or king e4, because he has to. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it could, could be anything you're right. King e2 is favourite. It's a tough choice. But I'm going to give king e3. 32%. Yeah, so king e4 makes some sense. King e4. But he has to think about the e5. Ah, king e4, no, yeah. he'll play, yeah, because bishop e5, yes. Well, then so. king d5, it's not such a complicated calculation. Right. Right, actually, you can win that king and king pawn. e4 threatens king d5. Yeah, king so e4, he'll play. Maybe a little bit. Huh. And then Vincent will play king e6, regardless, and then king d1, king d3, rook c1, and then the, that's the question what to do after that. Yep. So many questions. Maybe he's not going to d3 voluntarily. <coughs> oh, is he still giving him the look? He's so tired, but he's still giving him the Vincent Keimer look. So what is the Vincent Keimer stare all about? There, there he is. Yeah, I can see it. Wow, intimidating. Yeah, it's very scary. Very scary. Um, Friedman in the tank, trying to work out what he's going to do after that variation. Just make a move, Daniel. Come on. H3. H3. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> Why? He wants to go G4? He doesn't. He has chess culture, so he doesn't like his pawns fixed on That's the good. wrong color, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. But still, king to the middle. It's also supposed to be a good idea. I kind of like this decision though, actually, by Daniel, to just get in G4 quickly. And Vincent understanding that the odds of him winning this are very low. Mm. Just keep making moves. At this point, it's a battle of attrition. I can't see Daniel's face, so we don't know how tired he looks. I think he's fine. But I know I'm tired, and I haven't thought for yeah, a I'm second Yeah, I'm exhausted. Today. I mean, it's 11 o'clock at night. Rook c1. Played. And... Uh, I guess g4 can be met by rook h1. Yeah, or h4. It's a <coughs> decision that has to be thought through. Yeah, fixing but a weakness. Apologies. Um, yeah, rook h1 is a problem. H4, bigger problem. Yeah, you've got to be a bit careful about that. And Daniel, of the course. Is once he went h3, you can't yeah. just keep running around with your king, because exactly. now this is hanging. So it was mildly committal. Mm -hmm. No, you can give a check. Go back, let's say, maybe. That's a good way to do this. But Daniel doesn't look thrilled with his position. It just doesn't look like he's panicking. He looks tired as well. Everybody's tired. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock in the evening. There's not many tournaments where you play this late, especially having played an earlier round. In fact, I can't even think of any tournaments where you play at this level, I mean, I've played tournaments this late. I remember the um, Spanish island, what's it called? Mallorca Open. We would start around at 8 o'clock in the evening. Sick. But it wasn't as tense as no? this. Well, maybe. 
Yeah, so all these Spanish tournaments start ridiculously late. Yeah. Rook d3. It also makes some sense. Keeps an eye on this. <laughs> oh! We've, we've got, got a guest. Company. No, I'll leave it to you. I can. How are you? Well, quite good today. <laughs> quite good. Uh, yes. Hello, welcome, Magnus. It's been Thank a long time since I've sat here and you there, actually, in this yeah, setting. Yeah, I've uh, done, done a lot of things. Uh, life moves on, life ch uh, yeah. things change, but one thing that remains constant is you seem to, uh, to win a lot of chess games. So, well done today. It was really nice, actually, this game, I think. Um, we'll go, we'll go through it and you'll tell me the key moments. Seems as though it was, Jan was commenting that it's all kind of not newish ideas. Yeah, I mean, it's really embarrassing that, I mean, first of all, it's kind of insane to get two Benoni games in one day. Like, <laughs> I don't remember the last game I had one Benoni. Um, but anyways, uh, I, I end up going for this fairly modern line. But the thing is, like, I knew that 14a5 is the critical move. And then I looked at this. This is the last thing that I looked at before I left for the game. And All I right. still couldn't remember anything. So, so just, so, just so to so be... I, sorry, I had to sort of play by, by hand. But so you were in the actually expecting a Benoni today by, by Richard? Yeah, it's one of the main things okay. that he plays. And he plays it against things. So. Okay. So you saw a5. And then you left the hotel and you couldn't remember much after, after this moment. No, no. I, I mean, I thought, I, I, I remember like Bishop of four was often making move, but yeah. not much more than that. Um, for instance, I had no idea what would happen if you'd gone rook a6 here, but I expect, uh, I suspect it's not a great move. And then like try and put the measurement d4. The engine says the white's much better. Why? I have no idea. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah. I so, yeah, this rook a3. Um, knight a6. Knight a6, castles, knight b4. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, maybe queen d2 was inaccurate. I don't know. Maybe that was just unnecessary. Looked totally. Yeah, yeah whatever. Okay, queen d2, d2, b6. This is normal. Almost good, yeah. Um, yeah, Looked this, good. Yeah, I was really surprised by rook a, s a seven. Um, really? Yeah, I thought he'd go bishop a six. Yeah, we were looking at that uh, as well. And then I was thinking of going b three. Yeah, b three looks normal. Um, and then rook a seven or something like this. It was not obvious to me, like who's better and why. Um, I mean, I'd go h four and, and play. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we played rook a7. Um, honestly, like these positions are just really complicated, so I was kind of figuring it out on the fly. Um, well, I went h4, which is logical. Um, rook f, yeah. So rook f7. Maybe you could have gone queen f6 immediately here. Um, yeah, we were looking at that as well. Yeah, I, I mean, if I take the pawn on. I thought about this, bishop f5, then I go bishop b5. Um, the thing is, like, I had no idea how to evaluate such a position. Rook b8, knight c4. And then, I don't know. Tough. Really yeah, complicated. Yeah, it's really complicated. I mean, my king is safer, so I always have that to, to go on, but I, mean, I didn't know much else. Um, okay. But rook f7, uh, so here I just needed a little bit of time to understand that h5, uh, queen f6 was um, not too impressive. Um, since like compared to, um, compared to the immediate, queen f6, he gets a good version. Right. Uh, so I was happy with bishop g5, mm -hmm. and now it's really, really tough for him, I think. 
There should be seven. I mean, okay, queen c7, but that's really hard to play. Like, it's really hard to play like that. Because um, the queen's just offside here. Right? Yeah, queen, I go h5. Um, and if, yeah, I continue with either, yeah, bishop f4, bishop h6, sometimes hg, and not, bishop f5 can always be met by um, bishop g4. So Yeah, that's a key idea, yeah. isn't it? Okay, uh, so bishop e7 was logical. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, so I took. And this was a surprising moment for me and Jan. Me and Jan thought we, he was going to take with one of the rooks. Oh. Or did you expect queen takes e7? No, I expected queen takes and then queen f6. Oh, right. So what was wrong with something like this, for example? Um, I, I guess nothing particular was wrong. I was going to go h5. Yeah. Yeah, rook g7. I thought, I thought it's just the... Or Yeah, rook f6, I go f3. f3. I thought... Mm, I thought it was just unpleasant for him. Right. Um, oh, you have this h6 idea. Yeah, h6 is there everywhere. Okay, king g7, okay, that's... Ugh, that's hard to play. Um, can even throw in b3 to get the long diagonal yeah. here. I mean, th these are, are just... Mm. Positions that engines just understand so much better uh, than than we do. Um, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, well, he took with the queen. Took with the queen. Yeah, h five. But I was expecting I was expecting queen f six. Okay. So this was the surprising part. I couldn't. Oh, I was not intending to take on b six. Why is that so good? Mm. I guess he just has too many weaknesses. A5 is weak afterwards. Yeah. Well, that's so not easy. And then just back. And then just back. Knight d3. B3. Just, you leave the uh, Kasparov yeah. horse on d3 and say, yeah. doesn't do anything. I this is not an octopus on no, this occasion. I guess I have f3 in some lines as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, that was not obvious to me. Uh, okay, bishop f5. Now, however, uh, bishop g4. Yeah, and this was the last. This was his last uh, chance, I think. Takes. Uh, takes and now rook f5. Yeah. yeah. This I was not so sure about. Yeah, Jan was a big fan of. Yeah, I was, I was actually no, I was ah. yeah, I was actually I was actually um, thinking of going queen h six and go for that end game. That was Instead of H G. Yeah, I was not so sure about this. Uh, then Queen of Fates. Queen of Fates. Um, I thought Rook E takes a fate. Uh, H G Rook d5, uh, gh. Uh, I thought this is very pleasant for me. Yeah, yeah. rook e4. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. Okay, he played rook g7. Rook g7 felt far too passive. Yeah. Okay. No, but it, it was. I think it was just a trick. H6, queen d7. Just would have been ah. kind of, kind of a call shower. Oh, I have rook f. Four rook f six. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, and if I have rook f seven, you can yeah, take. Yeah, I just couldn't see anything clear after queen d seven. Mm -hmm. But I, w I just needed to find this f four idea uh, to go for uh, for rookie one. You mean? Yeah, for rookie one. Yeah, yes. and it's just already come. So yeah, I think it's it's just gone. It's just, it's gone just immediately gone. So yeah, it's takes uh, everything uh, here. And then yeah, f four key four, idea. Yeah. Yeah, queen c3 wins as well, but that's kind of a bit too fancy. F4 is yeah, just so yeah. clean, and queen e2, and there's nothing you can really do to stop the invasion. Yeah, and the thing about the um, knights on b4 have sort of a an interesting. Um, they have a bit of an interesting story in King's Indian slash Bernoulli structures, like. Um, Often they are 
they can be a strong piece, but it only if they can support if they can support other play in the center. Like oftentimes it ends up like now that the knight never moves again. Yeah. Um because the action is happening on the on the king side. Um obviously like there were moments where you could go knight d three and so on, so it wasn't bad from the start, but uh, I think it's quite telling that in this game like everything happened and the knight never moved again. And even when the knight does land on d3, you can play around it sometimes yeah, as well. Yeah, that was something that I couldn't quite appreciate, but, uh, but yeah, even then. All right, well, I think we could say that was a pretty good day, pretty good bounce back day for you. Yeah. After a very, I mean, I know I didn't see you last night, I see you after the game, but I was speaking to Jan and I said how disappointed you would have been not converting uh, the piece up position against MBL uh, last night. Yeah. Or, or maybe you weren't that disappointed, I don't know. No, no, I was extremely disappointed. Right, that's what I thought. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, it was, to be fair, like, he found some amazing ideas. Yes. And my, my uh, clock manage management was, was horrible, but, right. um, yeah, I mean, not winning that is obviously not good enough. <laughs> right. But today, beautiful game. Yeah. Uh, today two, was two really... I mean, I think flawless. I mean, that last game at least was. I think it's flawless. It was a flawless game. So yeah, it wasn't put to the greatest of tests. Um, right. Of course, um, the opening worked out amazingly against Vincent. Yes. Yeah. Of course, a great day. And very quickly before you go, this is the last game remaining. Fridman against Kaima. Um I would be worried here as white. Yeah, I think uh, Friedman is going to lose. You think Friedman? I mean, he's he's done a lot of wrong to get in this position. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's you know, Vincent is a better player, so so it's not um, too surprising. Actually, but this also means that we're I think we're going to have four, like we're going to have one if Vincent wins, we're yeah. going to have one player on plus two, four players on. Pl on even score and yeah. then one on minus two. That's quite That's nice, nice, sim nice, nice symmetry. symmetry. Yeah, and I think the problem is here you have this, this, and then rook b3 is... Yeah, rook uh, b3. This is, this is bad. This is very bad. Yeah. I mean, if you survive this, fair play, but I don't imagine... Yeah, I don't think it's going to... No. All right, it's been a long day. Look, we'll let you yeah. go. Thanks, Magnus, for coming. And we'll hopefully see you again here very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Magnus Carlsen, ladies and gentlemen, with a perfect day uh, for the GOAT. Um, really nice explanation there. I like how he was talking about the knight on B4, the role the knight plays in the King's Indian slash um, Benoni structures, uh, and how the knight can just sometimes be just totally caught offside on B4. If it doesn't get in the game, it's just a a bystander, just a pedestrian. Speaking of bystander, I'm back. How's Vinny doing? Vinny is, I think, going to win. Uh, he's got this really good chance now. He's managed to get active with the king. And defending this rook and pawn is just gross because yeah, the pawns are immobile. This check and king g3 is in the air. Um, obviously, the, the past f pawn is here. Looks tough. Looks really tough, yeah. Um, Crowd still around. Not leaving Vinny's sight. Die Hard fans. Yeah, That's great movie. Yeah, I was going to say, not Die Hard fans of, of Vinny, but Die Hard. Um, poor Bruce Willis. You heard what happened to him. Yeah, he's not doing well, is he? He's not oh. doing well. I think it's Parkinson's he's got. I don't know. Awful. Well, is that is that your favorite Hans, or you prefer Niemann? <laughs> no, that, I definitely prefer the Die Hard Hans. Mm -hmm. Hans Gruber? Yeah, Hans Gruber. Fair enough. Yippie ki -yay? Is that the... that was... Was that him? Yeah, that was, right? I'm not sure. Doesn't Yippie Bruce say that? Yeah, that's... Bruce says that. Mm -hmm. Anyways... Talk. Thinking of my youth. Reminiscing. Reminiscing. I used to have the posters in my room. Wow. Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Train Spotting, Die Hard. Wow. So much has changed. H4. Gross. 
Yeah. Rogue B2, check. Disgusting. Yeah, this is this is nasty. This King is H3, Rook B3, B3 and King, King G4. G4. Yeah. I guess you just lose all these races. Check. King back, King G4. Let's say Rook A7, G5. Yeah. Oh, no. <coughs> Way too slow. Normally the pawns can give check. And the white pawns aren't really moving. It's just no chance. Yeah. yeah, and Daniel knows it. You can tell the body language has really changed yeah, here. He's not happy. Yeah, well, I actually... point must have been to go king h3 now, but it's not going to save it. No, this is, uh, this is, this is not going to happen. Well done to Vincent for grinding this one out. He... He could have easily just made a draw, but he understood that he was running zero risk and... Let me just catch up what happened uh, here. Some moving around. Oh, Bishop F4, well, that's a committal decision. Really committal really good, decision. But, uh, now the king came in with tempo, king F3, check. So it's all still fine. Ah, king E4 is a really nice move, by the way. Four, more trickery. Uh, rook d6 was a mistake. Yeah, you had to stay put. Mm -hmm. Not easy. Now you go rook a1. Yeah, apparently. Why are you still holding? But of course, yeah. Already under some pressure. Good job by Vincent. Yeah, fantastic. tired, but. Fantastic job by Vincent. He's gonna grind this one out. Daniel realizes King H3 was not saving him, so goes King F1. King F3. <coughs> King F3, apparently not the most precise, because now there's Rook E6. King E1 he's played. King E1 looks more natural, but you just lose the race as a problem. King G3. Once again, Rook A7, G5, or a threatening G5 either way. I guess his idea is to go King D1 and just run over here. That's not tight. Here, rook f6, gh, gh, yeah. pawn runs. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now we I have seen it. Vincent make a mistake in, a, in an ending against Ding, so he's going to have to be a little bit careful. But extra alert. He goes king g4. That's the same theme of the king d1, g5 is still strong. <coughs> but yeah, that's. I'm not sure how obvious g5 is. King cut off on the back rank is just so bad. Yeah. Because King H4 is less clear than King C1. And yeah, he does go King H4. But now King C1 does hope for Daniel Whoa. again. So now either King H4 to let is B pawn run. Yeah. This is so surprising that he didn't go G5. Really Stop. surprising. He's not quite there at the, the, the absolute late yeah. stage. Easy to say. Sitting here with computer, I'm not sure. Mm. It's g5, rook f6, gh. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not an easy, easy decision. Rook e2, no. b5. You can lose now. Here comes Boyan. You can actually lose. Because if you play something really poor like rook e5, rook a4, check rook b4 suddenly and no, this is this is I I now take I now take black. Uh, sorry, white. I take white now. G five B six. Wow, I think he realizes as well. Rook B six. Rook B six, and you have to calculate G four. And now A four, you might lose. Four G three. So the king has king to B2. come. B two. King H three. Messi. King f3. King f3 loses then g2. Mm. No, still complicated. King g3? Wow. I mean. Okay, so, uh, no, I understand, but uh, I think.
think Vincent's really unhappy. So after b6 here, mm. rook e8. Eight. Yeah, because h4, b7 is over. Yeah, not time, so to b, So back. let's try b7. No, still. He could still win this. <coughs> yeah. So rook b8. Rook b8, rook b6, and I lose as well. Or what? Well, the h pawn is pretty fast. Oh my god. b6, he has to go rook b8, rook e8. 46 seconds. Vincent yeah. Kaimat. He will. <coughs> of course he will go rook e8. Not here, because of this, so we'll go back. No, he didn't play this, he went back. Mm -hmm. These positions are just insanely tough to play. And no humans really play these perfectly. Hmm. Apparently rook a7 is a strong move. I'm trying to figure out why g5 is not great here. And now the rook can get behind the h-pawn and white is mm. in time with pushing these guys. Mm. Wow. And you lose rook h7? Yeah. Gee. Oh, this will be heartbreaking for Vincent if he loses this. Well, he doesn't have to play g5, but well, yeah, that's a key resource, so the h pawn can be stopped. I think so you'll play rook a7 this. as well. Yeah. I think you'll find it. Let's see. Can I go rook g8, or is that too subtle? Wow. Doesn't change much because you go here, here. Oh, wow. With such little time left, 10 seconds only bonus per move, um, expect some mistakes. Time is running out. Daniel's like, damn, I wish I had 20 minutes here. A big, yep, a big puff of the cheeks. And he's going for no a4. a4. Okay, that's not losing, but okay, seven. It might still transpose, right? Mm. Seemed much cleaner. Okay, now h4, then you really have to go okay, seven. And all of a sudden, black has some more options. So I'm not loving this. Okay, he's gonna go h4. Like this. Plate. And rook a7. Well done, Daniel. Rook a7. Finding this. Move too late, but still in time to hold. But now rook g8, yeah, it's much trickier. Now rook c7. Rook you're not in time like earlier. You were in time with the h pawn, so one square behind. No, you are sort of in time, right? Mm -hmm. a5? Okay, h3. Now you need to find rook. Oh, well, wow, so only rook e7 back, works, but, but rook, d7. rook d7. Rook d7 looks more normal. And yeah, he's played rook d7. Yeah. That's losing. Yeah, but it's impossible to understand why. Yeah. Like why the rook on the e-file compared to the d-file is winning? I guess here you just go rook b8, yeah? Mm. That's actually not impossible to understand. Mm. But why, what's the difference between the e-file and d-file? I don't, I don't understand. So h2. Rook e3, king h4. Somewhere. Mm. So here the checks save you, but they don't. Anyway, we should focus on the action. Rook d4, king h3. Rook d3, king g4. Rook d4, king g5. Draw? Did they draw? I think so, yeah. <coughs> I also didn't see how to uh, Holy. get out of it. Wow. But he's gonna 